Good morning, everyone. For Telesur, I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas, Venezuela. We start off today in West Africa. Dramatic events in Burkina Faso over the last 24 hours have brought a wave of violent protests, the burning of the parliament, and the military stepping into the political crisis. Late Thursday, the president of Burkina Faso, Blaise Compore, rejected calls for his resignation. He says he will remain as the head of a military-backed transitional government. He has been seeking to extend his 27-year reign. The Armed Forces Chief says the military's imposed transitional government will last 12 hours. Opposition leaders say Compore's resignation is non-negotiable and have labeled the army intervention as a coup. Compore came to power in a 1987 coup that toppled the socialist leader Tomas Sankara. Sankara had become known as the African Che Guevara. And to Mexico now we go where parents and classmates of the disappeared Ayotzinapa students say they feel less confident about than ever about the government's investigation. Many of them now believe a media campaign is seeking to discredit the students by falsely linking them to criminal groups. It comes after the relatives met with Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto. Here's our correspondent Clayton Kahn. Parents of the disappeared 43 Ayotzinapa students say that they left their first gathering with Mexico's president Enrique Peña Nieto feeling the same as they did before the five-hour meeting. We are not going to trust the words of the president nor the commitments he made on national TV until the 43 normalistas are presented alive. Meanwhile, Omar Garcia, Ayotzinapa student and survivor of the attack in Iguala Guerrera, denounces recent reports that links the missing students to organized crime. ¿Con qué calidad moral nos vienen a With what moral character do they come and tell us that we are connected to some organized crime group? There is no such a thing. It is an attempt to criminalize us and to reduce the problem. Es un intento por reducir el problema. Civil society continues to exponentially support the students organizing protests, but also activities such as this Day of the Dead altar to raise awareness. The offering is not to say that the normalistas are dead or anything like that. What we do believe is dead in this country is justice, homeland and peace. While the colors may be vibrant and with a grinning festive atmosphere, the now common tagline, We Are Missing 43, exposes the somber and gray reality in Mexico. Clayton Khan, Telesur. Mexico City. And thanks to Clayton, the international spotlight remains focused on Mexico with solidarity events around the world. Is the, the famed human rights group Madres de Plaza Mayo. The group has campaigned tirelessly for decades for justice for those disappeared or stolen by the Argentine dictatorship of the 1970s and 1980s. They held a protest in Mexico City on Thursday, drawing comparisons with the 43 disappeared in Mexico and the cases in Argentina. Colombian rebels have taken responsibility for acts of war committed during the country's 50-year conflict with the Colombian military. The announcement came during peace talks with the Colombian government underway in Cuba. The two sides have already reached agreement on planned cooperation of eradicating the illicit drug trade, agricultural reform, and the FARC's possible future in legal politics. FARC leaders acknowledge that the violence has impacted civilians and killed some 200,000 people in 50 years. We explicitly recognize that our actions have affected civilians at different times and under different circumstances throughout the conflict, which after extending has generated major and multiple impacts, but never has this been the reason of our existence. The Cuba hosted International Summit to Tackle Ebola ended Thursday. 32 countries from the Americas, including the United States, discussed plans to tackle the Ebola virus. Agreements included that Cuba would help train health professionals from other countries in treating the disease. The conference was held as a row exploded in the United States over the quarantining by some states of health professionals returning from treating Ebola in West Africa. One nurse is suing over the quarantine and travel ban was criticized by Doctors Without Borders. Ahead of next month's UN Climate Conference in Peru, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has slammed the environmental impact of the use of fracking to drill for oil and gas. In a speech Thursday, Maduro said the process is leading to the destruction of planet Earth. The method is increasingly used in the United States 
It remains controversial and is blamed for polluting local water supplies. In the United Kingdom, critics have condemned a new law that will allow fracking under, under people's property without their permission. And to the Middle East we go where ongoing unrest continues after the Israeli government's controversial decision to close the Al Atska Mosque. The government says it might reopen the site on Friday. The move has only added to tensions. The mosque is one of the holiest sites for Islam. Protests broke out on Thursday due to the, due to the decision by Israel to prevent access to the holy site for the first time in over 40 years. Palestinian representatives declared the blockade an act of war. Staying in the Middle East, U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel said Thursday that the U.S.'s goal in Syria is still the ousting of President Bashar al-Assad. The Assad government has been fighting al-Qaeda-linked groups for a number of years in a civil war that has seen 10 million people displaced and 200,000 killed. After Syria's al-Qaeda group entered a pact with Islamic State, some began to question if the U.S. had pulled back from its aim to, of ousting Assad as to what's required to stabilize and secure that part of the world in an effective inclusive. A new report from the charity Oxfam shows that the number of billionaires in the world has more than doubled since the global financial crisis. The figures show there are 1,600 billionaires in the world today. The report on global inequality shows that 7 out of 10 people live in countries where the gap between rich and poor is greater than 30 years ago. It adds that the wealth of the richest 85 people on earth is growing by nearly $700 million each day. The group is calling for a 1.5 percent tax on the wealth of the world's billionaires. They say the measure would save millions of lives in the poorest countries through health care and ensure every child goes to school. We end this morning on a musical note, but with a bit of a difference. Students from the Malmo Academy of Music are believed to be the world's first bands to entirely use 3D printed instruments. Using computer design software, the group tailor made their instruments for each musician, musician's requirements right before simply pressing the print, pr print button. Their steam print guitar even contains moving parts, but the 3D printing technique is not just for novelty value or artistic designs. The designers say it can help the musician by customizing the shape and weight to fit their needs. Cool. More on those stories and others at our website, telesurtv.net slash English. For Telesur English, I'm Cody Weddle. Hope you have a great day.